Playing jungle puts you under enormous pressure from your teammates to perform and carry the early game. You're playing the role that isn't anchored to a lane, so you have the most influence over which team gets ahead early. And if your teammates obnoxious pings and expectations of you to carry aren't overwhelming enough, here's some stats that you may find interesting. Whichever team gets first blood has around a 60% chance of winning the game, and destroying the first tower leaves you with a 71% chance of winning the game. If a better early game translates into destroying a nexus and junglers have the most impact during this phase, you shouldn't need convincing that your early game impact is something that you'll want to maximize. Luckily for us, we work with one of the few players who plays Phil all the way to Challenger, which has left him with an unorthodox playstyle compared to jungle mains because he plays as a laner so often. We are of course talking about Hector, and simply put, he places very little value on gold and experience and carries the game through his laners, even if he's smurfing in silver. Hector is the jungler who is everywhere and the guy everyone wants on their team. We sent him to play a bunch of games while commentating his real-time decisions for us to all learn from, no hindsight analyzing here. Throughout today's guide, we'll be asking you a bunch of questions to test your decision making, then you can compare it to Hector's real-time thoughts to see if you can think like a challenger. So let's get started. Kicking things off, we have Hector playing Talia versus Shaco. Now, imagine you are the Talia and here are your matchups. Which lanes would you focus your ganks on and why? Let's hear what Hector has to say. All right, so looking at team comps this game, I probably don't really care to go uh, bot lane too much. I might just focus on top. Top is like the only lane that can reliably build armor, which is insane into that enemy team comp. Like Revan can actually go tab eyes and death stance and stuff like that. Whereas no one else on our team really can, so kind of want to play around her and enable her to carry the game. Not only that, but it's ignite versus ignite, so this lane is super, super volatile. Simply put, when the enemy team is heavy AP or AD like it is here, you want to look at who can exploit the flaw in the enemy team comp the most. The answer is often going to be your top laner since the top lane pool favors bruisers and tanks and those archetypes can easily stack resistances. Meanwhile, even if most mid and ADCs get ahead, they can't really rush resistances. Even their boots usually have to be berserkers or sorks to optimize their damage. Of course, if you have something like a Cho'Gath or Malphite mid, aka random tanky champions that are sometimes played in other roles, then you could play around that as well. Other questions that you want to ask yourself when deciding where to gank are, who has good engage, and which lanes will be volatile. So, for example, if Nami was a Leona, that lane would have good engage and be easier to gank for. However, it's likely still better to gank for the Riven since a fed Jin is much less likely to carry than an armor stacking fed Riven. And as we heard from Hector, top lane is also going to be volatile because both lanes are melee champions, so they need to get close to each other to CS, resulting in active trades, and they're both running Ignite. Anyway, Hector clears from bot toward top with the intent to get Riven ahead. After clearing Scuttle, he goes for the gank. Let's see what happens. So it's safe to say that things are going great for Hector's game plan. He now heads back to clear the Gromp into a recall. Okay, so you're Talia and you've just recalled. Take a look at the minimap. Where would you go next? Let's listen in and see what Hector does. So he was bouncing back towards my lane right now. Efficient jungle pathing would dictate that I should that I should path towards bot side. But the laner in me is telling me just go back top and win the game. So. We know this guy has no summoners, and by the looks of things, I don't think he really had the ward. The way he reacted to the previous, like, when I was here during the gank, the way he reacted makes me know that he doesn't have a ward here. So I'm not even going to waste my pink ward. Mm, this is, like, really bad. What am I watching? What? Maybe this is the best bait of all time? I, I can't tell. Not my best W. Nice. Now, if Riven is smart, she would freeze this and then take a recall. Probably not going to happen, but she's still so far ahead that she should win the game for us. Okay, so Hector did something weird and risky here. 
He pathed back to topside with literally no camps to farm just to regank the Wukong. If this didn't work out onto Wukong, he'd be really far behind. He just took this risk to get a Platinum Elo Ribbon ahead when he himself is a challenger. Why play so selfless and rely on a low elo teammate, you ask? Well, there are a few things to consider here. First, Hector's Riven isn't just his top laner. It's who he believes is the easiest win condition to stomp this game, since she can build like a bruiser and just take over against that heavy AD team if she's ahead. Winning together with his Riven is easier than trying to 1v9 selfishly as Talia. It's not that you can't do the selfish route. But against Trindamir, Wukong, and Shaco, a single mistake as Talia is going to be game losing. It can be a bit easier to try and carry with a buddy 2v8 style rather than 1v9. Of course, if he was playing something like Graves where you can be a bruiser and carry the game through itemization, then he'd be less inclined to take such a risk. And third, as we said, playing for laners is in Hector's blood. As a person who plays Phil and has a 4 out of 5 chance of playing a laner in his games, he plays jungle like the jungler that he wishes he had, and Riven's wish has certainly come true this game. She ends up repaying Hector in kind and stomping this game, going legendary by 17 minutes, and together they hard carry the game. And just so you know, all of the full-length commentaries featured in today's guide, along with hundreds more, can be found over at the best place to improve at League of Legends, Skillcat. These commentaries are unique since we send challengers into low elo to show you exactly how to carry your way out of elo hell. And you don't have to take our word for it. At Skillcapped, you can input your rank before signing up to see where we think you'll climb to. If you don't hit that rank while actively using our service, you can claim a full refund. So check us out right after this. Alright, so let's swap things over to the next game. Once again, as you load into a game, you should immediately formulate your opening route based on the lanes in that game. With these as your matchups, where would you path towards if you were playing Hecarim? Uh, but basically, as I was saying, every lane is good to play around. Top lane is double melee, uh, so it's going to be volatile. And bot lane is range support with the versus my Blitzcrank. They should be looking to push in, which means... It should generally be easy to gank them. And mid lane is also volatile mer melee versus melee. Any answer was good here, but why is he starting bottom then? Basically, you just want to consider which of your teammates has more consistent follow-up. A Blitzcrank can miss a hook, whereas a Darius is much less likely to screw up and apprehend engage. I really need to get to top lane fast. What Darius did may seem good, but if Lee is good, he's at Darius is actually losing. Uh, because now Darius is out of resources, and Lee Sin just teleports back. Oh, but Lee started W, no wonder he lost. And these are the exact types of situations where lane knowledge comes in handy as a jungler. It's important to understand how Ignite versus Teleport lane matchups work, which is something you will commonly find in mid and top lane. Remember, at the start, how important we said the early game was? Well, this is a huge deal, so listen up. It's a common belief that having Ignite is the aggressive summoner spell choice in lane, when in actuality, Teleport is the aggressive choice. Ignite is usually for later into the lane phase or the mid game. The reason is simple, and what Hector is afraid of. Even if an Ignite player scores a kill, the player who teleports back can just push them out of lane with a health advantage. During the early game, missing even just one or two waves can put you disastrously behind. It's not uncommon at all for the player with Ignite to score first blood and then be behind 1-2 to two levels in lane from an early freeze. Maybe I should have just went E. Okay, we see Kha'Zix. Okay, so I'm a little... I don't have to head to top lane immediately anymore. Uh, my Darius is safe. He actually got a recall off because the lead didn't play it correctly. And so we see Kha'Zix. So there's no need for me to rush anywhere. Okay, so the big problem that could have occurred didn't happen because the enemy Lee started W, so we couldn't actually pressure a freeze against the Darius. But let's say that things were going exactly as we discussed. If Lee managed to teleport and hold a freeze, what would you have done differently at this precise moment in time? Leveling your E, taking red, and immediately helping Darius would have been correct. You can see him holding his ability level up prior to going to Raptors, although he didn't specifically say this in the commentary, you can see his mouse over the top lane about to pan the camera over there. 
but he could just tell that the Darius managed to crash the wave from the minimap anyway, since it's on top of Lee's tower. So that's why he commits the two points in Q. Kha'Zix is bottom, and he doesn't need to rush top anymore. This would be the same as putting two points in Q as Karthus, Evelyn, or Kha'Zix to maximize your clear speed. Anyway, you can clearly tell that he is incredibly invested in acquiring as much information as possible based on the lane that he's pathing toward. Knowing exactly what's going on is crucial for your first gank success. He's now approaching that stage, so let's watch what happens. Now the wave is pushing towards my Darius, which means it should be a pretty easy gank. Or she just fight him. Okay, he's... What? I have to target champions only, do you guys see that? <laughs> what the heck? I'm actually so tilted. Oh, I'm so tilted right now, I'm so tilted. I think I can still get the scuttle. Now, you may be thinking, is this a surprise challenge? Did we max out his mouse sensitivity again? Did we take away his keyboard? No, that's, I mean, that's just kind of Hector. But jokes aside, while his mechanical misplay negated his super thought out early game, the aim of this guide is of course to help you get way more consistent results. The rationale behind his early choices was rock solid and would have gained him an immediate lead if he had simply clicked on the champion. Anyway, if you want to see how he makes up for it and crushes the game anyway despite his inting team, then you can always just watch the full commentary over on the site. Alright, onto our final replay we have a Jarvan game. And here are your matchups once again. If you were Jarvan, where do you think you would path toward? This game's early pathing was a complete no-brainer, as Hector had a Leona and Tristana on his team. There are certain lanes like these where you just almost always path that way due to their immense follow-up. This is similar to how you almost always path toward Renekton's, since you'll either get an easy gank or dive setup. Okay, so I know Jin Zhao's passing topside. It's actually quite good information for me. I'm not sure I'll be able to gank bottom, sadly. So I'm probably just going to full clear here. Probably just gonna go take Shin's Raptors. We saw him sprinting towards topside, but that lane's pushing into Silas, so Shin Zhao's not really going to get much done. And I can just kind of shadow both my mid and bot lane while I counter jungle him. Okay, so this is the massive difference in the effectiveness between Hector and Xin Zhao this game. Both of those champions want to spam ganks as much as possible. That being said, solo queue is an unpredictable environment, which is why information gathering is so important. You can't just three camp gank every game. From the very start, Hector was aware that the lane was pushing into the enemy bot and not a lot of action was taking place. It was unlikely to result in a gank very quickly. Meanwhile, the enemy Jin Zhao was doing the standard red-blue gromp for a fast level 3. The problem with doing so is that, as Hector said, the wave is pushing toward his Silas. Therefore, his hasty route has no payoff. What this means is that he has very little stall camps to work with. What we mean by stall camps is basically just jungle camps that you can do as you wait for a gank opportunity to present itself. As is the case here, Hector's stall camps are the camps Zinn left behind. Bot lane wasn't immediately gankable, but Hector had plenty of time to farm and wait for an opportunity without losing any efficiency in the process. Eventually, this flank setup presented itself. Not only has his pathing been clean and efficient, but he has also easily gotten the lane that he set out to get ahead in early kill. This was all possible due to his vigilant eye and lack of Xin Zhao's own information gathering. Oh, we can dive here. Very easily dive with the sky zoom. There's a big wave coming in. We know where the enemy Xin Zhao is. Hurry up. Uh, let me go first. Oh my god. Oh. 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 Oh, I'm so sorry. Like we said from the start, Hector is the jungler who is everywhere and the guy everyone wants on their team. Again, just like before, Hector is quite adamant about proving that he's not a complete wash of a player and makes up for it with a clean dive this time around. As always, proving mechanics don't win games, macro, determination, and willpower is all it takes to conquer solo queue. 
All right, everyone, remember that you can find all of these Smurf commentaries over at skillcap.com so that you can learn how challengers think in real time to carry teammates from hell and climb ELO fast. You can ask them questions on the videos and you're guaranteed to get a response from them. So how did you do with the questions? Do you think like a challenger? Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.